welcome to That's So Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I'm glad to have you back. In today's um, tutorial, we're going to be doing this, um, the Clippy Zippy, <laughs> I think that's cute, from so, um, Salty Sews. I've been eyeing this pattern for quite some time. I first seen Salty Sews out of Sew Magical and they have beautiful prints and cool little knickknacks. And then I seen on their website that they had a, um, a cute little zipper pouch which I will show right now, that you can put your little clips in. And I was like, oh my God, I want to make this. They gave me the permission to give it a go. I'll have the link in my in the description to where you could purchase the pattern. It's just under $3. And I feel like it's a great little pattern to have for a couple of different reasons. One, you have, you have a place to place your clips. Two, we're in the middle of the year. And I think when you guys get this, it's going to be either the 1st of July so we're more than halfway down with the year and I thought this will be a perfect little thing to do at swaps or have if you're at a retreat to have a little bit of your clips or just to have at your table. Um, the, the world's your oyster. You can do pretty much anything you want. It doesn't take a lot of materials. So let's go over that briefly. We're going to need one zipper, an 11 inch zipper. I'm using a size five. Um, I'm using waterproof canvas for the lining. And this really cool Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man Miles Morales print from Alchemax as my exterior. I interfaced it with ShapeFlex 101. The tools that are suggested in there in the here, of course, is a pair of scissors. I used a boning tool to a bolding folder tool to poke out all the corners. I have my zipper, of course, and some hemostats and something to help snip threads. So let's get into it. It's not very complex. This is a perfect Sojo project. If you wanna get some things done and uh, your, sewing, your Sojo is out of whack, then you can start here. We're gonna take our zipper and we're gonna separate it. I know, I know, I know. So half of this is gonna go away. The reason why I think it's perfect for a project is because one zipper, um, can be used for a bag for you and another side of the zipper could be for your friends. So what I like to do, we're going to find the centers because this zipper is a little bit taller than, um, I'm looking for the clips and the clips are right there in front of me. <laughs> um, it's a little bit longer than the length of the fabric. So I'm just going to put a mark in the middle with some chalk. I'm going to do the same thing here. You could do a nice little like, eighth of an inch uh, little corner snip. The seam allowance is one fourth of an inch. So normally when it's one fourth of an inch, I just draw a mark and call it a day. So that way I don't accidentally cut into the seam allowance. All right, so I'm going to take my marking and match them. And right now I have lining sides right side up. This is the way I normally sew mines together. Um, lining sides right side up, wrong side of the zipper tape on the right side of the, the lining piece. And I'm gonna, you can, okay, so I machine based this at one eighth of an inch. You can be brave and like clip it together. because it's already clipped down. You could put one eighth of an inch zipper tape, um, zipper tape, double sided tape on the lining piece so it can hold it in place so nothing shifts. I'm gonna be brave for you. We're gonna sew this, the zipper teeth, the sandwiched in at one fourth of an inch. I'm using a 90-14 needle because I did not change the last needle. I'm not gonna pretend that I changed a new one. <laughs> I did not. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and end. And my zip, my stitch length is at a three. I'm using 40 weight thread, Saba thread from a Wawak. And I'm back stitching at the end. Now, if you want, you could take this to your um, press and press right, wrong sides together. Just be cognizant of your zipper tape. I'm just finger pressing it. Or if you have a seam roller, that can actually help too. The finger pressing works just as well. 
And what I like to do when I'm finger pressing it and I don't use the iron is I like to just use a couple clips on the bottom before I top stitch to make sure nothing kind of folds over or bows out. So we're gonna top stitch this at one eighth of an inch on the top and you can increase your stitch, stitch length. I'm gonna increase mine to 3.5 instead of three. And I always, I, I still back stitch at the beginning and the end. Gotta lock in those stitches. All right. Trim those threads. Okay. So if you're following along, we're going to be on page um, four right now, and we're going to put the zipper tab on. Now, what you can do is you can, if it's easier for you to do it this way, why you have a little, a little hanging off, do so. I find it sometimes easier for me to cut the zipper tape flush just in case I didn't get it even, but that's pretty much how it is right there. So I'm going to cut off that excess zipper tape right now. And I'm gonna open up the zipper so it's at least halfway open. And I'm going to take the exterior and I wanna see the wrong sides of the exterior and wrong sides of the lining. So while we have this here, you are going to push the zipper tape clips into the lining. So you're just trying to, right here and here, you have two seams. It's easier just to try to match those team seam, two seams and then put a clip versus trying to fold your finger in. So there's a, there's a seam for the lining, match that. And then there's a seam for the exterior. And I'm going to match that right now. So the zipper tape is going towards, the zipper teeth are bowing into the lining. And just put a couple clips. And everything should line up really nice. And we're going to sew this down with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now, when I get to this zipper part where I know the zipper head is, I mean, not the zipper head, but where the end of the zipper, I backstitch several because that's, that area is going to get a lot of wear and tear and it just makes it a little bit easier. You can keep your stitch length at the same as the 3.5 or you can decrease. It all depends on your material. If you're using vinyl for this, then I highly recommend you not to, to use a longer stitch length so that way you don't, um, get procreation and like it's too many stitches and it rips because that's very probable this is a small project and i i would love to see it in vinyl but i was actually it was i found it, it might be a little too much i think for me but that's just me so what i like to do is i sometimes go back over if i don't feel like it got stitched enough and what helps me poke out those corners is i usually go in and i make sure i trim just where this where the zipper is so that way I can reduce some of the bulk. And I like to trim around and that's it. So we're going to completely close the, um, the pocket on the main pa pattern piece. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit in there. So we're gonna do a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance on the bottom and you get all these little burrs. Back stitch really well to get in the end. You can Go back to your original stitch length, or you can keep it at that 3.5. It's your discretion. And then we're going to, this is, this is shown on um, page five. We're going to kind of like go in a half an inch on both sides and leave an opening. I know it seems daunting, but again, this is where we get our, we get our, hemis, our hemostats and we're going to be fine. So let me get... It would help if I would have uh, held my towels. Hold your towels, people. Hold your towels. <laughs> it's okay. Let's see. And I'm just going to backstitch a few times at the beginning and end. And I'm just going to bring my thread and bring it to the other side. 
and go in about a half inch. You can draw this in beforehand, like marks to stop and go. Sometimes that helps tremendously. And I'm just going to trim all these threads. All right. So now we're going to box our corners. So what I like to do to box corners is I like to make it as like stick my fingers in the, like the mouth. It sounds weird, but try to make it like flush as possible on all corners. Open up that seam allowance and just make it flush as possible. And then put as many as clips or as few as clips as you want. I'm an over clipper for sure. Okay. And take your time that to me, box corners can be like, is a little difficult for me. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to make it absolutely perfect. And if you were off by just a hair, it can make it not perfect. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to now sew each one of these at down at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Backstitch really well at the beginning and end. And I like to backstitch over the seam. It's just a, if you've been a follower of my channel, you know it's just a thing that I like to do. And I trim this down just a tad to about one eighth of an inch. So that way um, it could be a nice boxy curve. I mean boxy again going across this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, trimming this down to one eighth of an inch. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing now onto the lining side. And remember, we have a little bit of a hole to turn. We're gonna open up. You can open up the seeds or you can have the seeds go side to side. It doesn't matter. It It's all personal preference. I'll do side to side just for time, but I do prefer having it butterfly open. I don't know why, but I do. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just pulling this, making it nice and taut. And this side doesn't have uh, a two side seam, so I'm going to butterfly that the side that one the one side that has the side seams open. And I'm going to go a little bit above one fourth of an inch because I want it to be a little nice and taut in the inside. But it's going to be a clip pull, so it really did. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but it's a habit now, you know. We all have our sewing habits. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna sew one fourth of an inch. Back stitch well, beginning and end. All right. All right, so make sure everything is trimmed, that it needs to be trimmed. And our bag looks like this. And you're like, Shinova, this is a small little hole. This is the beauty of the hemostats. Okay, so if you don't have the hemostats, I think what it could work, just in case you don't have one, is if you use a, a non-blunt item, like a folding tool, and you can poke it through and kind of just like thread the fabric through the hole as seen, see? And you can pull it out from there. Um, the great thing about the hemostats, you can just go through the hole, and you could pick a corner and you can kind of pinch and then you pull <laughs> without ripping anything <laughs> would be preferable. <laughs> Don't pull too hard, especially on vinyl or cloth or whatever, you do, cause you don't want it to pinch it off like a pair of scissors. So just pull through. 
But again, I think you could do this without a turning, um, without hemostats, but it's nice if you have them. I think it's pretty much in a lot of uh, sewers arsenal, but I, I, I do think it's feasible to do with like a, um, a bone finger or a purple thing or the many, many notions that we do have. And it does, this took me a, a little while for the other one. It took this, this part took me longer to do than to sew. Um, cause it's a smaller hole, but it, it's worth it. And you get a hand workout. <laughs> so let me get this done. And if I was my daughter, I would be able to fast forward through this part, but I'm not her. So <laughs> you're going to see me, uh, struggle for a bit, but it's cool. It's all part of the process. And I think all it has to do with waterproof canvas. I'm I had, I didn't make it without it, but I'm pretty sure if I did this with a cotton thing, it probably would give a little bit more. There's so much structure to a waterproof canvas. It's not even funny. All right. Oops. Let's hit my hand dead into the machine. It's almost there. I can feel it. <laughs> I'm just pressing now. Those uh, loop turners might be really good at this actually, um, but we're almost there. We see the zipper tape. We're almost at the home stretch. All right. This was like performing surgery. <laughs> all right so when i get to this point i'm going to use this uh turner to gently poke out the corners of see it's a waterproof canvas it's so stiff but i mean it's water resistant canvas or cotton will work really well. I just won't, I don't know. I usually put waterproof canvas in things that I use myself because I'm a hot mess and I usually get water everywhere or like Coca-Cola or coffee. Chances are if it's my own personal stuff. <laughs> All right, we got it. Yay. One eternity later. <laughs> All right. So I'm using just a, um, a, a bone folder. Like they use these for, um, folding things for journaling and books and whatnot. And I'm going to take my hemostasis and kind of just poke out the corners gently. All right, and then I'm going to sew this little <laughs> um, hole up. <laughs> yep, you could probably put a drop, some some crazy glue if you don't want to do this, or you could do a hand stitching. But if I think just a small little one eighth of an inch um, stitch is absolutely perfect. Okay. And back stitch the beginning and the end. You could put a tag in there, that would be really cute. There's so many cute tags out right now. Stick that in there, poke out the corners, and then you zip it, and you have like the cutest little. I need to poke out this corner still. <laughs> You have the cutest little clip bag, like with scraps. So like you can have like a whole bunch of cool tool of pink ones or whatever. You can just, now you're ready to go. You're ready to go to your next project and it sits on its own. There's only interfacing I use with the Shape Flex 101 for the cotton. And then I use waterproof canvas, but I'm pretty sure the way this is um, set up because it's a perfect little uh, box corners that you can do it in all cotton 
and it will stand up as well. But I think this is a cute little get, um, thing to make yourself as a gift. And I also think it'll be cute as different things. Like um, there are mini Lego sets. If you're trying to give something to a kid for their birthday, you could put like all like a mini Lego set in here and like their favorite candy. Or I thought for a sewing gift, you can put like, um, like English paper piecing thread and needles. Like I feel like this could be used for a lot of different things. Um, super cute and I love how the back is because it gives you something to anchor onto and you're ready to go. Here's a bit it up. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will have all the information linked to where you could purchase um, Salty Sew's Clippy Zippy. <laughs> I think that's such a cute name. And um, the fabric that I'm using, I'm using from Alchemats. This is the Maya Morales and their Christmas one. The zipper tape on this one, I believe I purchased from um, my handmade space and this one is from lauren mormino um the zipper pulls are this one's from my handmade space and this one is from actually uh the sewing room gardener if you have any questions on the machines i'm using which i use my juki 5550 which is a cool event to a juki qvp mini um, and, or anything products I use, please comment down below and I'll answer. If you um, can like, subscribe, and comment, it helps out this channel tremendously. And I hope you have a really good day. Until the next time I see you, happy sewing. Bye.